people of God are exhorting one another. And Hosea records their words. Come, let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. The third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come to us as the rain as the latter and the former rain unto the earth. And then God speaks to his prophet. O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as morning cloud and as the early dew it goeth away. Therefore I have hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. And thy judgments are as the light that goeth forth. For I desired mercy, or I desired steadfast love, not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. They're encouraged. They're exhorting each other to come back and know the Lord. And what they're saying is true. The Hebrew Bible, the one that Rabbi Kohler reads, reads like this. Come, let us turn back to the Lord. He attacked it, and he can heal us. He wounded, and he can bind us up. In two days, he will make us whole again. On the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall be whole by his favor. Let us pursue obedience to the Lord and we shall become obedient. His appearance is as sure as daybreak. And he will come to us like rain, like latter rain that refreshes the earth. What the people of God are saying is true. It is true. They're saying that if we, if we follow on to know him, if we pursue what we know to do, then we shall become the kind of people we want to be. If we pursue obedience, we will become obedient. See, that's something. Because by nature, you and I are not obedient. We are disobedient. If we don't know for sure what to do, we'll usually choose the wrong thing because it's expedient and that's what we want to do. And we don't want to work too hard to find out. When it comes into the area of decision, we won't pray too long and we won't wait too long because the carnal nature wants to do it a certain way. I'm not talking about evil. I'm talking about the choice of good and good one of which is evil. All we like sheep have gone astray, every man into his own way. That is not necessarily the way of robbing banks, prostitution, and the way of drunkenness or of taking drugs. That is simply our own way. That's blowing the horn you want to blow. That's being in music because you want to be in music. That's being on a football or basketball or baseball team because you want to be on there. That's doing what you want to do because you have a desire to accomplish in that area. That's taking college because you want to. 
That's going here and going there because you want to. And in the place of decision, you're a little bit afraid, and I'm a little bit afraid in the carnal nature, that if I wait, God will deny me in that area. And most likely, he will. <laughs> but in the side, there's a desire in your heart and my heart and the carnal nature to have our way and still want to be saved. There comes moments of inspiration and moments of exhortation and moments of decoration when you and I know what these people know. If we follow on to know the Lord, we will become obedient. We know it down deep inside. Yes, sir. And if we follow on to know the Lord, something will happen. The great promise of revival here. He will come as the early and the latter rain, the latter rain, which has never come upon us. The early rain was that of Pentecost. Our people in Israel know a little bit more about what this means even than we do. That is, in the natural world, they desire water. They need water. And if we have one more year of, of a waterless season, it's going to be disaster in Israel. Isn't it true if we have one more year of a waterless season in the church, it's going to be disaster in this place and in this nation? It's going to be disaster. I'm telling you, Dan Rather the other night on TV and some of the other reporters in ABC this week, they're saying if we don't get some help, there's disaster. Yes, right. The consensus of opinion is we don't get a rain. If we don't get a rain. They're not sure what they're calling for, but they know we need it. My heart was encouraged this week when I heard that Pat Robinson had taken the cameras down to Asbury in search of a revival and there uh, told the Asburians that all over the nation they begin to set up uh, places of prayer just to pray for revival. And you know God operated on that. Now when the charismatics who have thought revival already came are now beginning to realize it's not here at all. Why do we know revival's not here? Because the world, the earth, and the devil's taking us faster than we're taking them. Brother, let me tell you something. They've got the thing going. They've got all that Michigan and all that Notre Dame had together and they're all one, running in one direction. And brother, we're by ourselves. And unless we turn to Almighty God and give ourselves utterly in commitment to Him, unless we follow on and know Him, unless we're in this place, every service, every one of them, Unless we read that Bible every day, this is an old-fashioned gospel, but brother, it's the truth. Unless we have family prayer, I mean we pay the price to have it. Unless, my friend, we do what God wants us to do, what he's witness, let me tell you something. It's over. It's disastrous. It doesn't do us any good to say, come on, we've been torn up, but he's going to heal us. Because he has a word for us. He said, your, likes, your love's like the morning dew. The sun comes out and it's gone. A little flirtation hits and you're gone. A little care, a little thing over here hits and you're gone. A decision comes that's going to sweep away the help from Almighty God that would have rolled out of heaven upon, fa upon your family and you're gone. What if Aunt Zelpy hadn't heard the voice of God and got over to Brother Helm's daddy's parents. What if Aunt Zelpie hadn't have gotten there? What if she hadn't have gotten there? What's your daddy's first name, Edwin? Eldon. Eldon would have died. Eldon would have died. He told me something I didn't know yesterday. God, God, she's never been on a mission before or since. That was it. That was her one mission to be used of God once in a lifetime. It's worth a lifetime of living. She made her way into this boy that said he's going to die. It was a, the consensus and the doctors agreed. He's gone. We'd never be in this place. It never, this would never have happened to us. There'd never be a Helm family. There'd never be a Lauren Helm. But Ann Zelpy heard the voice of God. And she got over there and she sized the situation up. And then she said to Eldon's mother and daddy, If you will get right with God, your boy will be healed. 
Our future. Our future was in the hands of a mother and daddy. Was her name Esther? Esther ran from it. She was in this room and that room, around and about in every place, until one day, Zelpie met her face to face. She said, Esther, you get what you want. This boy here, you better quit being a nominal Christian. They went to church when they wanted to. But they chose their services. They were nominally Christian. Church members, but not there on the firing line, not there in the place of prayer, not there at all times, not putting God first every hour, every day, every time. They weren't doing it. And their son was dying, and there was a lot hinging on his life. Esther, if you want this boy to be ill, then you're going to have to give everything to God. You're going to have to give your life to God. You're going to have to be all for Jesus. And Esther went to her knees and gave her heart to God. And Daddy made his heart with, right with God. And Esther prayed and worked with Eldon's body. And the life came back into his body. And God healed him. And from, and from there, and from their life came forth all these Helm brothers. From their love. And what did Aunt Zelpie say? She said, the life of this boy or that of his seed will encircle the globe. And brother, it's circling the globe today. Now remember, remember, his life or death was in the hands of his parents. And I'm convinced absolutely the life or death of our children are in our own hands. And I'm convinced that the hours are so late that you and I today are going to have to say, Oh, let me from this day be holy thine. Don't you wait for a place of prayer. You hit it when you get home. Brother, you hit the closet. Don't let this go by. Ask God to rend the heavens. Ask God to do anything necessary. But, oh God, whatever you do, get me to the place of commitment all the way. Holy thine, that my children will be saved and the children of this church will be saved. John said, the greatest joy I have is to see that my children walk in truth. He was talking not just about his natural children. He was talking about the church of the living God. God saying to Israel, I'd like to do it. I want to do it. Oh, Ephraim. Oh, Judah. Your goodness is like the fog this morning. It's gone before the morning's over. Your steadfast love is gone. The decisions of the day taking you away from me. The heat and the pressure of the day and you're gone. Your love is like the morning dew. The scorch of the heat of this life takes you away from me. What they said was true. God, I desire that with all my heart. Whenever we love Him faithfully and whenever we put Him face, face first and whenever we love Him with all of our heart, then He says, I'll bring the rain. I'll bring the rain. As sure as the sun comes up in the morning, as sure as the morning comes up, the morning is prepared. I'll bring the rain. It will come. The night of the soul will be gone. It'll be gone. Oh, from this day, let me be holy thine. Oh, dear people of God. Oh, dear people of God. Don't fail God at this point. Pray that I'll not fail him at this point. I'm in the middle of trying to write something that's going to be published and I don't know what the end of it is. It's the second open door and you're on the spot in the eyes of the whole world. You're the ones that are on the spot. If this thing gets published, you'll be the ones on the spot. And brother, they'll come in here and they'll be looking into your face. They'll be looking for a hope that Christianity hasn't been offering. They'll be looking. They'll say, where are you? Meanwhile, I'm trying to get you to be in your place and to be here every service and to put God first and to put things first that he's witnessed upon holy all together so that revival may increase and so that the early and the latter rain may come. And I'm asking God today to split heavens if necessary. Oh, God in heaven, whatever, whatever it takes to get to my soul. Why have some of our people fallen away? I saw it years ago. 
Why do they get it irregular and then they're gone? Why does the devil tell them they're not love and tell them this and that and the other? Because back there, they weren't with us in that commitment to give their tithe unto God. I knew then, I knew 10 to 12, 15 years ago they wouldn't be here. I knew they'd start falling away. But I'll tell you, oh, I knew it. I knew it. See, the signs are all there years before it happens usually. And oh, God in heaven, but the ones who have halfway heard the message, ones who have halfway heard the prayer, I beg of you, I beseech you together with me to be a living sacrifice that God may bring revival fires in this place, that it'll not be just a few because there's just a few really got the revival in their hearts, but that, my friends, it will keep the new converts alive. We've got two or three more here this morning who've just found Jesus in the last few weeks. Oh, it'll take your victory in mind to keep them alive till they can get to the place where they can have the joy of the Lord to keep somebody else alive. God desires it. God wants it. We need it. We've got to have it or you and I are going to fall before our TVs. We're going to fall before our morning breakfast. We're going to say, my God, why did not I do it when the pastor called upon me? Hell have enlarged herself, taking my family, taking my relatives. Our nation's about to fall, yet the prophet cried and I could not hear him. More than that, I would not hear him. The Lord says, forget what's behind. Steadfast love is possible. I didn't no more feel saved last night than the man in the moon. But I knew because of the shed blood of Christ that I was. I knew that because I had repented of my sins that I was. I knew that Jesus, so I said, Lord, here I am, Jesus, how can the world, can I ever preach or say anything in the morning? How can it ever be? But Lord, I know you're faithful, so I'll just be faithful to you. I'll just be there. And by God's grace, he's been so wonderful to speak to us this morning. I pray, I pray. Oh, listen, dear ones. There are those of you here who are so called of God. If you will be faithful, it'll, it'll, take, it'll take the nominal Christianity out of the rest of the people. If you're faithful to God, if you follow in the path of these that are in obedience, God will stir this place up. And it won't be just a little local revival. It'll be a revival we've got to have to back hell out of this United States of America and out of this world. We need it today. And you and I are on the spot. And listen, it's a great privilege, a great responsibility. But for my sake and for your sake, for the kingdom's sake, and for the sake of this world, oh, be holy gods. Just be holy gods from this day forth. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen.